malpractice. Malpractice in counseling and how this malpractice in counseling is different to malpractice in Islamic counseling. There are some differences because in within uh, the realms of Islamic counseling, we are talking about spirituality and that has uh, different requirements, um, different boundaries and is based on different sources. The, the, it relies on different law, not only the mainstream, but also on Sharia. So let's look into malpractice from counseling point of view and then let's compare it to Islamic counseling point of view would that be all right okay so um, in therapy uh, the way you develop yourself as a practitioner or a, a teacher of therapeutics uh, brings uh, with it uh, a huge responsibility uh, because you want to make sure that your client gets professional uh, professional help and you want to make sure that you're providing the best level of duty of care and you do by all means have a duty of care. So guess what? All the clients out there seeking therapy, you have rights. And you, by uh, the rule of the thumb, you should be looked after. You should be looked after, including legally by your therapist. So that is uh, putting a therapist on the spot, doesn't it? But that's the way it is for us, uh, for us here on, on the other side of the spectrum. So many would consider uh, this to be common sense, but often it's not being taken into that degree of seriousness unfortunately and we have consequences we have problems we have therapists who are being stroked and part of providing proper duty for the client proper care means that we as practitioners we need to have a good information about the client we need to know how to identify and head off any problems and we are in, it's a must for us uh, to have good skills uh, which can be used to assist uh, with any problems which we believe we can deal with and which we are trained to deal with. Okay, and uh, even if that means that you uh, you at some point need to signpost somewhere else, that still is your duty of care. So when we don't do that, when we don't realize how important that, uh, that professional approach and uh, being, uh, being in tune within your own limits of uh, proficiency is, uh, we might get into the problem. And before I go into the issues, meaning the list of the problems, let me just compare it to what Islam says about just this aspect, duty of care, so we can uh, so we can approach it from the thick of business, but also what we could do, we could approach it from the perspective of Tarabia. So that's what we're going to do today, believe it or not. So stay tuned. Now, speaking about the problems, speaking about mistakes, uh, speaking about the real issues, when a psychologist, psychotherapist, or any type of therapist harms a patient through lack of knowledge or negligence, or malpractice. Most, uh, most, uh, in most situations, um, it might result in a lawsuit. And uh, that also includes uh, the rules of the country which you, uh, which where you're living in. Uh, so the therapist, uh, so the therapist, uh, they can harm consciously or unconsciously. However, uh, however. Uh, the legal principle, the legal principle can come into play if uh, if the situation uh, is raised to the attention of the court. So the most common, uh, almost intentional thoughts that give rise to lawsuit are go against a therapist. They might include sexual assault, sexual battery, breach of uh, duty of trust, fraud. Uh, and intentional inflict of emotional distress, 
Obviously, those things, they need to be proven. But if you're listening to it right now as a client, make sure that you should be protected from any of those desire rights. In fact, they should be given to you, this information about your right, they should be given on the first meeting. Negligence uh, cases uh, against the psychologist or therapist involve the same factors uh, as uh, any other negligence. So the therapists are on the duty of care to the patient and it didn't happen. The therapist breach or failed meet standards of the duty. And uh, we're talking, about, we might talk about breach of direct causes or, um, or, or, or any situation, crucial situations uh, where patients uh, actual harm or injury happened, right? Now, from, uh, from the perspective of uh, Islam, we do accept that this is part of your duty, part of the package of being cancelled, but there's so much more to it as well. So do you remember how I spoke about Tarabiya? I hope you do remember, because other than all of that, looking after clients, you as a therapist, you ought to look after yourself. Purely because the therapeutic alliance between you and your client might be something of more importance than the skills that you have. Of the contract that you have with your client. And that's what uh, science, that's what evidence in psychology and psychotherapy suggests. So your role, the way you perceive yourself, the way you look after yourself, the way you are aware of yourself, and we call it shahidin or being present, meaning, you know, maintaining hudur is so important. So for you to be spiritually inclined or holistically aware of the body, mind, heart and spirit dimensions is pivotal. It is your prerogative. It, in Islamic psychology, we suggest that it falls down to applying sunnah and unbuilding prophetic qualities, but there's so much more to it. So process of uh, observing client can only be successful for you uh, in that process of shahidin when you are in the pure state of heart and you have good understanding of Quran, good understanding of Sunnah, what they expect from you, and you can embody those prophetic, prophetic qualities such as humility, gratitude, trust, surrender, vigilance, empathy, love and generosity, and mercy towards clients, but also yourself. There's so much things that's going on between you and the client but you can't give away something from an empty vessel so you have to make sure that <clears throat> if you are talking about islamic counseling or you are advertising uh, to be islamic counselor or islamic therapist uh, you really understand what is it that you're advertising and you embody that within your practice, not only professional, but also personal for the sake of Allah, right? So some people, uh, they will uh, they will see uh, Islamic counseling um, as a... Um, oxymoron. It shouldn't exist. It, you know, some people might say, oh, all you do in the therapy, you are backbiting, or all you do in the therapy, you are you taking away things from the past, uh, you're discussing private issues, and that's something which is not permissible in Islam. Well, let's Let's not maybe emphasize how important the outlet for Muslim community uh, that therapy is, but let's see what Bukhari said about those aspects. He said, whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak, good or be silent, right? And how this sort of is understood from the perspective of therapy is not to keep it in, but disclosing, this expressing it can actually be for good because rather than keeping it, building it up and creating further pathologies in family dynamics and in your mental health. You're sort of going into trusted environment. Uh, as I already explained, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's professional uh, and it is a duty of your counselor or an Islamic counselor as well to maintain confidentiality and duty of care. Your duty of care is part of your duty of care is confidentiality, right? And backbiting, 
Well, we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took different types of questions. Yeah. And uh, he uh, actually re uh, recommended the approach of people and women, right, who had not put their haya in front of uh, curiosity and conquest of knowledge. So, um, so I think I'm, I'm referring now to women of Ansar, that uh, that's what we know. The Prophet Sallallahu he praised those women of Ansar for asking him detailed personal questions and not letting shyness preventing them from learning the details of their relationships uh, and their religion. And that is reported by Bukhari. Okay, so uh, so I hope that's helpful for both of you who are out there, practitioners and clients. Uh, don't forget to like my channel, IJS Therapy, and follow it, and wait for another videos because uh, twice a week I am downloading you a new material. Love you to have you see to see you here. Love you to have you here, and I'm looking forward for more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa